All right, oh, ladies no. and gentlemen, I know I originally promised that I was going to bring wonderful Liz Franzic and Brace Belden together in studio, but I was wrong. Turns out, uh, uh, turns out, you know, they're too good. They're the, the True Non Podcast is too popping. It's one of the top podcasts on Patreon. They're too good. They're too good to to come over to our our little corner of the internet. Even though Brace, you did give me a shout out one time uh, on the one of the last episodes I was listening to, where you said I was the only Twitch streamer you know when you were trying. You to are come the only names. Twitch streamer I know. Yeah, you were. Oh, you were both the only names. one I've. The only one I've heard of and the only one I've met. Yeah, that's a good thing. Trust. Let me be clear here, too. First of all, I didn't know that you wanted us to come over. To yeah, of do course, this. dude. What do you mean? Always. Well, I, I don't know. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's so much it's, better in person. I know. And your room looks so comfortable. It is, it is very comfy. You, get, yeah, you can pull up literally any time. Like, you know, if you want to fucking chill at the pool or whatever, if you're bored, just pull up. I don't give a shit. Like, that's what I did with Stavros, too. Like, he literally straight up, while I was streaming, was just hanging out in the pool by himself. Okay, I'm going to do that. Yeah. You should just give me a key. I mean, yeah, you just pull up, dude. I will. Don't worry about it. Uh, so today is an interesting day, obviously. There's a lot of news going on. Um, Stavros left come town. Uh, we're all devastated. Nothing else has happened in the country that is uh, important. They banned... Can I jewel on here? Yeah, I was about to say, dude, you're, you're a criminal. You got a fucking jewel in your hand, too. I, I went around the day that they announced it. I went around and uh, tried to buy as much as possible. And there was rationing. Like, the day of, there was rationing. People were like, no, you can only buy, like, two packs here. So it took me, like, you know, I don't have a car, so I had to walk all these different places. It took me, like, an hour to get, like, six packs of them. I'm so, I'm, you know, hey, listen, you're, you're an industrious guy. There's now going to be a black market for jewels. You should just learn how to make them. Obviously, that so never saying, yeah. that never led to like any problems at all, right? Black market jewels ha ha has not famously killed teenagers or anything like that. No, I I want to make jewel. I want to put a little something special in them too. Something that keeps people coming back. More <laughs> six six percent nicotine. Oh, you're gonna increase the nicotine. Aren't they also taking a nicotine? Uh, uh, they're they're taking nicotine out of cigarettes. If, what if, happened if they, in this country? If they take nicotine out of cigarettes at the same time, forcing every single cool person in America to quit doing one of the coolest things that they can do at the same time, this country is going to turn into a war zone. That will be people are like, oh, civil war is going to happen because of this. And that. No, there's going to be civil war, but like purge style where there's no like, it's not like along lines. It's just everyone going crazy. And then all the people who never smoked to begin with are like, you know, because everyone keeps smoking in their back pocket. It's like, if I ever reach critical, like, levels of not being cool, I can always take up Marb Lights, and then I get bumped up a point. Now no one can take up Marb Lights. And that's just going to, that's going to, that's going to. How is that going to work? It's going to be extra light. Too light. Too light. Yeah, no ultra light. That. The pussification no. of the American male is upon us, finally. It's, it's insane. And of yeah. course so it's I happening under a Democratic establishment, a Democratic leadership. And you know Obama smoked. And so this was a huge betrayal. A huge betrayal yeah. from Biden's F Biden's so-called FDA. Yeah, dark Brandon. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Brace is Brace is starting a protracted people's war against the FDA for 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 taking the cool things away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, jewels are definitely not cool. At least we agree on that, right? They're not. They're not cool. They're not cool. And that's the trade-off. That's how you know a real smokehead when you see one. Because I understand that smoking jewels is fucking lame. But I love smoking so much that I want to be able to do it compulsively all the time, even when I don't want a cigarette, which is what jewel provides me. Okay, there's a lot of young people in my audience, so I just want to point out something. I'm going to be boring right now and say it. What Brace is saying right now is his own opinions smoking is terrible don't do it i was deeply in addicted jail. i was deeply addicted i've that's the reason why i'm fucking constantly chewing on this nicotine gum and you guys always say like oh my god what are you chewing what are you chewing it's nicotine gum and this is the only reason why i was able to to stop smoking and looking really fucking cool while i did it but also yeah. don't smoke it's really it fucking bad you will never be yeah, able to yeah. quit so good. Yeah, they yanked one of my teeth out the other day, way back here. Awful procedure. And they're like, not only are we going to take something precious that you've had your whole life from you, 
well, I guess it kind of just grew as a wisdom tooth that just grew in like a year ago. But uh, they're like, we're not only going to take this from you, you also can't smoke for two days. That's fucked up, it's man. Just, yeah. Wait, why Luckily, not? I, mean, it, I guess you can get something called dry socket, which is, I looked that up. It doesn't look, look like something you really want to get. Okay. All right. Well, speaking of wisdom, okay, I brought you on here today. Yeah, that's a segue, baby. Segway God. A yeah, segue no, God. Exactly. Speaking of wisdom, I brought you on here to share your endless wisdom. Uh, is, uh, everyone knows you in this community, at the very least, as a journalist, uh, court reporter, um, specifically <laughs> specifically uh, covering the, the Ghislaine Maxwell trials in your like 700 part series that you guys did which was awesome i i watched it it was in a in a weird way it was like our uh johnny depp amber heard trial you know what i mean like we were really yeah. invested in that uh yeah if you were like a fucking nerd or a weirdo uh you were you were more invested in that and then now and then everyone else saw that and we're like oh we want to have like something for cool kids we're gonna have our own johnny depp amber heard thing no, um, this was, yeah, this was, it was, I attended every single day of the trial. Yeah. And you learned a lot. And now mm -hmm. the, the final culmination of your efforts and, and the, the efforts of the federal uh, criminal justice system uh, has, has come to finally throw Ghislaine Maxwell in prison for 20 years. Uh, how do you feel yes. about this? Well, it's a complicated thing, right? I mean, I, I, I think everyone expected that she'd get, uh, I mean, this is, I, I gotta be honest, about 20 years is what I expected. I didn't expect them to give her like 50 years or something, like some insane number. You know, she's a 60-year-old woman, 20 years, um, you know, it's probably about as good as you're going to get with that. But uh, it's, it's, I think it's interesting because... You know, if we kind of like step back and take stock of like who actually faced consequences for this stuff, who's actually like, you know, gotten busted and gotten in trouble. There's really three people. Jeffrey Epstein, who died in jail. Jean-Luc Burnell, who died in jail. And Ghislaine Maxwell, who was 20 years. And all of these people were sex traffickers. I mean, obviously also participating in the abuse themselves, but sex traffickers. But nobody that they actually trafficked girls to has even really been, I mean, aside touched. from stuff in the media, that not touch whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think Ghislaine Maxwell uh, is going, I mean, first of all, we all know that's not going to happen because those people are in, you know, positions of power. And maybe part of that also comes with the whole, like, participating in this kind of thing um, as an as a entry point into high society. Who knows? But uh, the other thing I wanted to ask is, uh, do you think Ghislaine Maxwell is going to, uh, to, to be Jeffrey Epstein? I mean, she, is she, is she going to talk about names? Is she going to name names? Is that ever a consideration? I mean, there was some talk of that, and I think a lot of people kind of hoping that she would sort of, um, you know, accept that she's really been cut loose and, and kind of just like, you know, obviously the cavalry is not coming to rescue her and just like start ratting people out left and right. But the thing about Ghislaine is that she's a pretty blooded up member of like, you know, of the upper classes. So like these are, this is her social circle. It's not like she snuck in there. I mean, you know, Jeffrey Epstein for as, you know, as, used her. Yeah. But like as rich a life he led, I mean, he wasn't exactly from this sort of like rarefied class. You know, he sort of entered that. Ghislaine was born and raised, you know, in the highest echelons of power. And so, you know, I, I never really expected her to fully turn and tattle on these people. Um, and now that she is going to prison, I mean, my, my thing is, I was like, well, I don't think they'd kill her in jail. I think they might make her, um, you know, Harvey Weinstein sort of like became a zombie. Like his, he just like, he started the trial upright and then ended his trial just like in a wheelchair, like with like a, like, you know, yeah. wheezing. I thought he was I faking it, was, it. I thought he was faking that. Am I victim I mean, blaming? No, no, he was, he was, he was definitely fake. Oh, actually. okay. Um, so they, it's a, you, so they, what, they dealt with him like, you know, democratic people's Republic of Korea style. Is that what you're saying? Suggesting? No, 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 I, I'm not saying, yeah, well, no, I mean, he did get a fair trial, but, uh, no, he, uh, my, I, I, I thought that they, they might do that to Ghislaine, but mentally, you know, like they might just make her basically like a raving idiot or something like that. They did not do that, you know, as evidenced by her giving a, um, very, um, 
let's say mealy mouth kind of um, mea culpa today. But I think when she actually gets to prison, and mind you, this is the Orange is the New Black prison, you know, she's already said that there's threats in her life from fellow inmates. She's been on suicide watch for about the past week uh, in jail. And now she's going to get sent to prison. Generally, pedophiles do not do well in prison. What about women's much... prisons, though? We don't know. I don't know, because lady pedophiles are kind of rare. And so they don't, I mean, who knows? Who knows exactly what they're going to be doing in there? Um, it's a minimum security prison. Um, I imagine uh, if it functions at all like men's prisons, she might get sent to like uh, sort of like a protective wing or like a wing with like, you know, basically made up of prisoners that other prisoners don't like and like would beat up like cops and shit like that. Um, I don't know, but I have a feeling she will probably be fine, at least until the public forgets about her. But I mean, really, she does, if she's not going to talk, then what's the point of killing her? You know what I mean? Epstein was so desperate to get out that I believe that they thought he was either willing to talk or at least had so much dirt on other people. Ghislaine also had a lot of dirt, has a lot of dirt on people, but I think that there's some reason that she wouldn't say a word. Yeah. I mean, that's why, that's why Boris Johnson's sister wrote that article, right? To be like, listen, remember, uh, you know, it's, we can get to you. Her, her fucking, her, God, that image from that article of Ghislaine Maxwell's heel digging into boris johnson his just rock hard three foot long or excuse me wide thigh sitting yeah. at like a fucking cafeteria disgusting boris boris has like a remarkable number of children from many women so he I does mean, did you not know this so okay no. fun facts about boris johnson first of all he's ottoman so i'm just gonna point that out We'll say he. I have watched videos of him in Turkey. Like, yeah, oh, this is. Oh, yeah. Wow. We are we are doing you know the plan. Trust the plan. Uh, the the uh, fifth column style uh, Ottoman Caliphate will will start off by one destroying the EU, the European Union, and then two turning uh, London into Londonistan, ultimately changing the dynamic, the makeup, the demographic makeup of Europe, so that we can have you know a one world Caliphate government. Uh, Boris Johnson is our most loyal soldier, but other than that, yeah, he has, uh, he has, what, what does he have? I think he has like eight children that we know of, like an insane amount of children. Eight and children? How many children does Boris Johnson have? Boris Johnson has had multiple wives. He has seven children. Sorry. He has seven. Not that eight. means there's eight or nine because there's always one or two that either. No, no, were. yeah, yeah, no. He we has, he has seven that we know of, but he uh, and these are all the affairs that we know have happened. Most of them, like a lot of them, are out of wedlock, of course, which is the British way. And mm -hmm. uh, and and I think like I mean Musk has eight, but I think he might have more. This is just that we like I said that we know of. But anyway, so one hundred percent they fucked. Yeah. Oh, there is, if there is one thing that I truly believe more than anything I've ever believed before in my life is that Boris Johnson and Ghislaine Maxwell almost certainly had sex. His own sister implied that she didn't have to do that. That was, yeah. that was a, that was a, that was a brag. But she didn't have to write that article at all, to be fair. No. Like, not, not a single part of that article needed to be written. It, it was Nobody very was weird. clamoring for it. No one would have even known. Yeah. Also, uh, unrelated, but kind of related, we should move to the UK because if Boris Johnson is fucking that much in the UK, like their standards are remarkably low. Oh my God, dude. Well, here's the thing. We do great there because almost, I think the statistic is 75 to 100% of British men are pedophiles. And so <laughs> if like, the thing is the women True. here are just like, it's, it's really like children of men is, is like an allegory because none of these adult women could find a guy that would be willing to have a kid with them. Yeah. No, actually, you know, it's, that's, those are, those are real facts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so speaking of pedophilia though, going back to the Ghislaine Maxwell trial. So, uh, she's getting 20 years in federal prison in the orange is the new black prison. Mm -hmm. Um, will the tapes ever, will the Jeffrey Epstein tapes ever come? Uh, will be, will they ever be unearthed? We'll never no. know what's on those tapes. Almost, almost beyond a shadow of a doubt, those tapes, unless there is some like extraordinary, like, you know, how people found out about COINTELPRO, like a break in or something, and someone accidentally steals the tape, hoping, you know, trying to steal something else or whatever. Um, there is beyond a shadow of a doubt, like, I, I don't think that there's no reason to bring those tapes out there, right? 
like there is absolutely no reason to reveal those tapes to the public. Um, then there's every reason to say that those tapes don't exist. I mean, even if you take the least conspiratorial or not even conspiratorial, but like the most um, benign explanation, right? Which is that Jeffrey Epstein was afforded the opportunity to kill himself because the guards were looking at motorcycles and boats on their computers. And even if you take that, um, why would they ever release the tape, right? I mean, it would just make the Bureau of Prisons look bad. Um, and if you take even not even a maximalist angle, you know, maybe oh, another I wasn't prisoner. even talking about the, the prison tapes. I was talking about his blackmail tapes. Oh, his blackmail tapes. Oh, yes. No, 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 no. Those things are good. The FBI took those from his fucking, from, from, uh, from, from his townhouse straight to the Hudson. You know, threw them in. They burned them and threw them in. I, I, I don't think there is a chance in hell. You know, there were some at the trial. I think we talked about this when, when we were on back in December. Um, at the trial, they showed us all of these CD binders, binders upon binders upon binders of CDs, DVDs that were in Jeffrey Epstein's safes and hidden in other parts. They also showed us an entire box of hard drives. The contents of that, totally unknown to us. We do know that there were some pictures of the victims on there, so we do know that there was essentially child porn on some of these tapes. Um, I mean, FBI now has a new treasure trove of child porn, aside exactly. from the one that they're sitting on top of. I know, maybe it's, you know, because, yeah, exactly, because, you know, the FBI uh, at one point was the largest, uh, ran the largest child pornography website. Maybe this is really where they get their material. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I don't think that there is, I mean, it's in everybody's interest except the publics, of course, and the victims, uh, for all this stuff to be suppressed, right? And for this, I, I mean, what I kind of predict is going to happen in about 10, 15 years, people are going to look back on the Epstein stuff and they're going to be like, well, you know, I think a lot of people were just like a little too, uh, you know, got lost in the sauce there. You know, it was just this like rich pedophile that happened discreetly. And I, by that, I mean not, well, didn't happen discreetly because he was showing it everywhere. But I mean, it was like a singular thing that just happened with him that all these other rich people were just friends with him because he was knew how to have a good time and had a private island. Um, when actually, like, you know, the truth is, is, is there was a what appears to be a giant sex trafficking ring that involves a lot of prominent people throughout the world. And most of the loose ends were either tied up or uh, by, you know, literally by hanging uh, or imprisoned in the Orange is the New Black prison. Yeah. Well, there is, there's still plenty of evidence. I don't know. Maybe they'll do like one of those things where they, you, you know, declassify to flex on someone. Like maybe in 20 to 30 years, we'll find out about it when they end up being like, hey, by the way, like these guys were pedophiles because they got mad at like someone involved in the Jeffrey Epstein sex trafficking. Like, that's yeah, the yeah. whole point of blackmail, right? Like someone steps out of line and then you, uh, you know, you leak the footage. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's always sort of been the, um, you know, the, the part about the Epstein stuff that's really been opaque in some ways is that obviously, I mean, I would say obviously, although we don't know 100% for sure, but what it looks like is that Jeffrey Epstein was collecting these tapes and, and making these connections for the purposes of blackmail. The question is, who, uh, on behalf of whom and in service of what, right? CIA and Mossad. I mean, that's 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 the most obvious suspects, I would I would say. I mean, I mean there is no there is no other reason why Ehud Barak would be in would be in Jeffrey Epstein's New York mansion, which uh, famously uh, housed Kimball Musk's girlfriend at the time, like you like to point out regularly. Um, yeah. Uh, why would he be there uh, hanging out with a known international sex trafficker pedophile? Exactly. I mean, maybe perhaps maybe just Epstein is just such a good friend of Israel, but um, it 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 really <sighs> doesn't seem to be that way, right? I mean, Barack said that he went there between ten and a hundred times, which, um, you know, call me crazy, but I'm I'm leaning more closer to a hundred there, probably. Uh, and he obviously knew that he was doing something wrong because every photograph of him leaving Epstein's mansion, he is dressed in like <laughs> he's. In Oofty. He's like, you know, he's wearing like basically, you know, he dress, he's dressed like a member of the PFLP. He's hanging out. He fucking shit wrapped around him. He can only see his eyes. Yeah. Um, you know, he he is. Uh, he's he knew that that he was doing something that he probably shouldn't be doing or at least be caught doing rather. Um, so, yeah, no, I'm, I'm in full agreement there. I mean, it, it, it really looks like uh, 
like, you know, he could have been collecting some tapes or maybe making deals or something. Uh, probably also partaking in the uh, pleasures of the flesh that Epstein provided him as well. Who do you think is the next uh, Ghislaine Maxwell, Jeffrey Epstein combo? And what industry will it come out of? Still Hollywood. That's a, that's a, good, that's a good question. Um, uh, uh, you're saying no Hollywood? No, I think definitely Hollywood or tech. Gotta be Hollywood. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure that there's small scale shit happening like this in tech constantly. I mean, if you read between the lines on a lot of these sort of Silicon Valley sex stories, um, you know, these guys are, these guys are getting girls from somewhere. Um, Elon Musk obviously has, I've heard from so many different people about Elon Musk's, um, poly lifestyle, let's say. Um, and, uh, and that, you know, I, you know he, there's a lot more of these guys out there, too. Um, I would say the fashion world is basically everybody who's a Jeffrey Epstein. You know, like, I'm sp talking specifically about high fashion. I don't know about, you know, like Zara or whatever. But, um, you know, there was that Canadian fella. Uh, I would say basically everybody in Hollywood. But I don't know. It's, it's hard to say because really the thing that made Epstein so unique was not just that he was a rich pedophile because there is no shortage of those. But it was the degree and the, the, the scale of his operation and all of the people that really like, I mean, Bill Gates, Bill Clinton, you know, like these are not small names. This isn't like fucking, I'm trying to think of like a mid, Bruce Hemsworth what? hanging around. I don't know. I was trying to think of like a mid-grade Hollywood actor, but I don't really know who is that, that is. Is that the third you know, Hemsworth brother? Did you name drop the third Hemsworth? Are there other Hemsworth? There's oh, is he third. four? No, that's Chris, I think. There's Chris. What is it? There's like three Hemsworths. None of them are named Bill. They're Australian. I don't think Australians name their Chris. children <laughs> Bill. B Billy Hemsworth, the third Hemsworth brother. Um, but uh, Luke. No, I, Luke, Luke, yeah. Um, but you know, like, I, you know, all like the, the thing, the difference is between like Epstein and a lot of these other fucking perverts is it's not like just Epstein's like hanging around with like Fatty Arbuckle and fucking. Um, Ezra Miller, you know, at like a, at a Los, uh, uh, Los Feliz bungalow, he's like out there with Bill Gates on the island, you know, he's making deals, you know, he's at the UN, he's got his own, you know, he's in the Atlantic Council, for Christ's sake. Um, yeah. It and he really- like I, there's an itch that needed to be scratched, and like, yeah. you know, someone has to facilitate uh, the children for these uh, elite millionaires and billionaires and, and people in positions of power. Yeah, exactly. And there's, you know, there's always been like, there's always been a certain type of person, um, you know, usually not as rich as Epstein, but like, like Lawrence King in the, uh, in, in the Franklin scandal, like the, these, these kind of people who really are, are, sur are surround themselves with people who are more powerful than them um, and, and facilitate those people's, uh, those people's appetites. Right. I mean, I gotta say, if anybody is, uh, I mean, this is maybe a little bit of a off topic but clarence thomas i think that one day there will be a true reckoning with that man's um sexual appetites and it will not be pretty uh yeah he is into bestiality as far as we know at least like into showing bestiality porn and i feel like if you have bestiality porn readily available to show your staffers or whatever then your clerks you definitely have a lot of bestiality pornography out there like that's you're showing your favorites. If you have a favorite bestiality porn, that means you watch a lot of fucking bestiality porn. Agreed, absolutely. And and it, I got to be real with you. It's one step away from. I mean, there's. Let me tell you, there's dogs everywhere. True, everywhere. Um, um that, but that yeah, makes I mean, sense. I, it's all these fucking people. I'm taking my shoes and socks off. I see you steam. giving fucking. I see you you freeing the puppies for free. Oh. They'll this is never, not even paywalled never. content right now. Nah, You're just nah, showcasing. Nah, nah. All you little Clarence Thomases out there, you'll never see these dogs in the in the nude. Um, <laughs> you just gave him a glimpse. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I got I got stockings on underneath. I have I have cream colored stockings to match my silky skin. Um, no, I think I, here's the here's the thing that if there's really anything to take away from the Jeffrey Epstein Galane Galane stuff is that like a it seems like all rich people and politicians are either pedophiles or willing to just hang out with pedophiles as much as possible and facilitate that and overlook it. If someone's even so much as, as can hint that they can give them anything in return. Um, and B, that there is probably an incredible amount of blackmail out there on basically every rich person in America.
Yeah. I mean, we know Brett Kavanaugh is a degenerate gambler, and, and that yeah. certainly wasn't a problem for the Senate committee that took a look at that $200,000 worth of gambling debt that was paid off. What about Kavanaugh's gambling debt? Yeah. All of these guys are, are very much compromised to a, mm -hmm. to a certain point where it's like it almost feels like you have to be in order to be a part of these circles. Absolutely you do. I mean, my God. It's, 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 I, I struggle to think of anybody who's been prominent in politics or, or the arts or industry uh, in my lifetime or really the past hundred, couple hundred years that is, 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 is anything like a normal human being that you would ever want to spend a second with. And not only because of their overt, bizarre natures and freakish mentalities, but also just because of their in weird, perverse, and perverted personal habits. They're strange folks. Yeah. Uh, for those of you in the chat who are wondering for the record, uh, there was not one, but two people actually came out uh, and, and uh, talked about uh, Clarence Thomas's proclivity and his porn predilection, um, which included talks of bestiality and rape scenes, as well as an actor who went by the name of Long Dawn Silver. This was Anita Hill's famous testimony and allegations. The conversations were very vivid. Uh, Hill told the committee, uh, which was led by uh, a, a Joe Brandon, actually, for those of you who don't know. He also, uh, I guess a second woman had come out with similar accusations, which kind of got buried. Another woman penned a Facebook post accusing Thomas of groping her twice in 1999. The story was buried under the seamlessly breathless coverage of then-candidates Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. But, uh, yeah, who knows? Yeah, I mean, there's also... I implore those who of the reading types out there to check out Nick Bryant's book, the uh, the Franklin Scandal, because Clarence Thomas is mentioned in there as well. I'm looking for it. Someone I've read the book a while ago. In fact, I'm rereading it right now for an upcoming episode. Um, but as King and King, this is Larry King, who's not the actual Larry King that you know and love, the old man in suspenders, but a uh, a banker from Nebraska. Uh, as King became a fixture of Republican politics at the national level, he rented a swanky Washington, D.C. townhouse on California Street Northwest near Embassy Row and started to throw fabulous parties. 1987 guest list from one of his D.C. parties boasted such luminaries as Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. Um, surprisingly, Clarence Thomas was one Republican big shot who didn't disavow knowing King. Instead, he called King's legal travails, unfor legal travails unfortunate. Though Thomas's name appears in the invitation list of an 87 D.C. party hosted by King, oh. Thomas said he... Yeah. He said he first met him in 88 at the New Orleans convention. I mean, also oh, that's a, Oh, come on. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, these people are fucking, I mean, you know, talk about Epstein's. The only yeah. pure person on that Supreme court is, is my beloved Amy Coney Barrett. She is, a, she is a fox and shout out to, to Twitter user Marina Oswald for digging those excerpts up. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, she, I gotta say Coney Barrett. I don't, you know, usually I'm like, I don't like it when someone's got three names. I prefer one name or better yet, one initial, then a last name. That's the kind of coolest way you can be named something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, ACB, you got you to gotta give it up to it. It's, it's a fucking weird freak who'd ever want to be a Supreme Court justice in the first place. Yeah, 100%. You, there's something broken in your brain if you want to be a Supreme Court justice. So, do you know that do you know that house near silver lake or the silver lake reservoir that had our uh ruth bader ginsburg painted on the side of it i have never seen i i, I do not travel beyond the borders of west hollywood i i live yeah. a life of i live in the lap of luxury and bourgeois decadence and i rarely I've, ever I've, go east i've heard you never i've heard you're a real west hollywood type yeah i am a real west Ho wait what does that mean <laughs> I, no i've just i've heard you're a real west hollywood type <laughs> i don't know what you mean by that i've just heard you're <laughs> i really um, i really travel east uh and and go to silver lake i mean sometimes well, let me tell you it is a great place to get rid of pennies i just fucking throw them in that goddamn reservoir um but there was a house next to it that had a giant i think it was like can't remember the other ladies on it, but it was like AOC, maybe some other lady. And then Ruth Bader Ginsburg painted big, like on the side of this person's house, like right next to the reservoir. And uh, I went there the other day and they had painted over it, which is. Oh, they did? Uh, nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now they just painted their house normal. I think they were probably sick of people like. Um, Coming up and like, saying Ruth Gonda forever and like doing yeah, the pilgrimage yeah. to the Amy. I mean, doing the pilgrimage to the RBG. Uh, 
mural, which is what I did. The only yeah. time I left West Hollywood was to do that. I, I always would her. do, you know that like, uh, that shit that people do with the fucking leaning tower pizza where they're like holding it up. Oh yeah. You yeah. Know, like the, I would do that, but it would look like I was giving her a wet willy. Well, there's still one in the East village in in New York. Luckily. Thank God. Yeah. It's, Thank it's God. I'm on the next flight to the Big Apple, baby. I got to fucking see that thing. I need, if I don't see Ruth Bader Ginsburg face every six to eight hours, then I'd go crazy and I might hurt somebody. <laughs> now that you're, now, well, now that they're taking away your cigarettes and jewels, I mean, who knows? You're liable to snap. She would never, she would never do that to me. I got to tell you, if you're a judge, here's what should happen. You get to be a Supreme Court judge for four years. After your four years is up, no one can even get mad at you during those four years. You can do whatever you want. After your four years are up, you face a trial from a kangaroo court. And because you're a judge and the court is so, um, you know, follows no legal dictates and is basically a foregone conclusion, you get so mad at the lack of legal processes that it actually is a fate worse than death. Oh, okay, yeah. For all the jurisprudence fetishists, uh, this is a fate worse than death. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. Uh, for all the institutionalists, a fate worse than death. It's like torture. Well, you know me, Hassan. I'm a Troika guy. So <laughs> I, think, I think that basically all court cases can be solved by three people. A soldier or a sailor, some type of factory worker, and then a peasant Agreed. and that judge jury executioner right there and Absolutely they can pick agree. which one they are but everybody gets that one role and you just got it you just gotta kind of go with it you know no i i comp i completely agree with what you're saying this is wait hold on you might be the first guest that i've ever had on that will probably agree with uh my suggestion i think in an effort to make uh i don't know the american the America KKK uh, 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 government uh, run in a more democratic capacity. I think we should have what I call a process, what I call the gauntlet, where if your approval rating goes dips below a certain percentage, and usually it's like let's say thirty five percent, right? Oh, and yeah, yeah, that's pretty fucking low, and that's, that's like about the you. that's about like what the Congress approval rating usually is around, right? As a whole, I believe that you should trigger a process called the gauntlet where states can bring forward a champion to beat the shit out of you in the, in the floor of the Senate or the House of Representatives. It, it will be like a champion, just like you said. Uh, it can be a sailor, a soldier, a peasant, uh, you know, a, a coal miner or whatever. We hop them up. We just, like, put them through this crazy process. Where they just take a lot of steroids. They learn hand-to-hand -hand combat. And then... This way, they get to experience the threat, or the threat of proletarian violence will keep them, uh, you know, beholden to their constituents, the true constituents' interests. But also create a, a sort of, I mean, you know, you got to think about blowback here because you could also get a Congress full of super soldiers, really, because, you know, if which I'm, I'm trying to. Which would also be sick. Yeah. yeah. Because here's the, a lot of people think steroids make you really angry and like um, you're crazy and you're bald and your dick doesn't work. I'm living proof that none of that's true. All <laughs> steroids do is they make you smarter, more cunning, and honestly, more empathetic. Yeah. To me, when I cycle, Hassan, when I go through a cycle, I honestly feel like I'm God. Not like I'm God, like I get to choose what everyone's doing. I feel like I'm God because I love everybody and I would sacrifice my own son for them. Yeah, no, steroids are very good. I agree. We we definitely yeah. agree on this. I'm putting that in the jewel too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, steroids? <laughs> a way easier way to just consume. A little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit of it. Okay, I, I agree. I you have so many good ideas, dude. It's crazy. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So that's the steroids. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. I, I, I get that. Um Okay, so let's talk about the jewel ban then for a brief moment here uh, before I, I let you go. Because we covered the Ghislaine Maxwell thing. I just wanted to hear what your, what your uh, you know, opinions were as someone who was in the court, you know, uh, uh, saying, you know, free Ghislaine, justice for Ghislaine, like every day as they tried to kick you out, but Dragged failed out to do by so. My heels. Yeah, because of, your many, <laughs> because of your many disguises, which fooled all the marshals. You know that they actually have shepherds, shepherds crooks in there, so Wait, that if no. you do start talking, no, they don't. No, what? No, no, oh my no. god! I, I mean, I, that's believable. 
Yeah, it could be like an antiquated federal court thing. Yeah, like they have like the fascies and uh, behind the fucking in the Senate. You know what I mean? Yeah, like why? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Why not that? Yeah. I could see that. Uh, yeah, we talked about that already. So we talked about all that. So uh, let me ask you what you what your opinions are on the jewel ban. Why is it happening? Let me just take a deep breath. I know this is I know this is traumatic. Wait, wait. Let me. There we go. That's it. That's what a deep breath sounds like. Um, <laughs> Didn't sound too deep. You know, Maybe from years of smoking <laughs> cigarettes and inhaling jewels, but Hassan, I've been smoking since I was twelve years old. First <laughs> that's time why I ever you're smoked. so cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's first time I ever smoked was salvia out of an apple. Um, my friend Gordon Jacobs gave it to me on a hill. Didn't get me high, but I just the smoke. You know, I, I don't know if you've seen Heat, but in, in that in that film, they say you know character says the action for me the the action is the juice and and for me the smoke is is the nicotine i love to smoke doesn't matter what it is but to me marijuana is makes me crazy wait doesn't that mean that it's better if it's just not there's no nicotine so you still seem cool when you're smoking the tobacco without any nicotine haven't didn't didn't think that far ahead <laughs> and i'm i'm finding some logic some holes in my own logic here Sorry. but you know it's a lifestyle for me. I, I smoke for a long time. I'm very addicted to cigarettes. I don't drink no more. I don't fucking shoot dope no more. I don't do any any kind of things no more. I just smoke, right? Mm -hmm. It's the one thing I have left. And, you know, obviously, big tobacco, bad. You know, they're awful, predatory. Uh, cigarettes are terrible for you. They, I do often. I've tried to quit. I have quit before. Wish I could quit many times. But I do think that... Uh, this is going to, regardless of what the FDA intends, and you know, obviously, I do not trust any government agency is doing exactly what they, you know, say that they're doing. That's that's, you know, I don't know if that sentence made sense, but I don't exactly trust their intentions here. Um, but uh, but I do think that this is is um, frankly not going to work very well. I mean, I, I understand Juul has led to an increase in youth smoking. Smoking. It's not smoking. It's a sacrifice that you make to not smoke by looking stupid by fucking putting a USB stick in your goddamn mouth. But uh, I understand that it has led to an increase in youth smoking. However, survival of the fittest. If you start smoking when you were 12 like me, you end up being, you know, Hassan, I'm 16 right now. And look at me. Look at how disgusting <laughs> I was smoking body four is. years ago. <laughs> I was smoking four years ago. No, but uh, I, you know, it's it's I, honestly, I get it. I I I don't not saying I'm right here. I'm not saying I'm morally in the right whatsoever. I'm not saying I'm politically in the right. I don't care. I'm gonna go insane if they ban Jewel. And I'm not. It's, it's if they ban Jewel, okay, I can live with that. If they ban nicotine, I mean, come on, that's gonna make a lot of people go really crazy all at once. That's why um, you gotta and, you gotta get on the nicotine gum train, which is super whack. I mean, it's way way worse than uh, a jewel. You look, I mean, at least it's discreet, so you don't have to like run yeah, around. Yeah, with people, the, people could just think you're a sassy little valley girl. Yeah, I mean, I I, I chew nonstop, so you know, I, I was I was chewing gum regardless. I have an oral fixation, but um, uh, West Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, so. The thing, uh, oh, one one last thing I was going to talk about, like I, I routinely reference you guys' uh, gambling uh, podcast that you do, that you've done. Yeah. And it's just gambling in general. You're a big gambler. You love gambling. You're always <laughs> urging people to go gamble. Have you looked into the crypto casinos at all? I have. Yes. I think, I feel like I reached out to you about this, yeah. right? Or am I crazy? Yeah. Yes. The, um... I was like, when we were talking, we, we did an episode about, uh, about online sports gambling. I ended up watching a bunch of Twitch streamer gamblers, a crypto casino gamblers. They're all over yeah. Twitch. They've completely overtaken Twitch. That's insane. So uh, it, it's like they, it looks like they're given a bunch of funny money by the casino or by the online casino, basically mm -hmm. a bunch of money to play with. And then obviously they're... I'm, you know, it's not like there's regulation on this shit, you know, like the, no. the odds are Curacao, fixed. They... There's no regulation. Ordinary Gamers did a, and Coffeezilla did a really good video on this too, like way yeah. back in the day. But yeah. Um, it's, it's also, you know, I, I actually, those are, I, I like those two YouTube channels. It's a damn shame their name, what they are, because it's, it's, a, those are rough names, but, <laughs> um, 
Yeah, no, it's just it's good astounding. for the target audience. Yeah, true. It, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Um, it's 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 sort of astounding to me that uh, my main thing about gambling is that I like to do it. I don't want to watch anyone gamble. In fact, watching someone else gambles makes me ashamed of my own gambling, and I don't gamble very often. It, it, the crypto casino stuff, like that stuff, I will be real. That stuff should be totally banned from Twitch. Like you should not be able to gamble whatsoever on here because it's going to be like some 16 year old fucking kid who thinks like, oh my God, I could fucking, dude, if I get my hands on 50 ape coin and I put it on like crazy casinos dot Nepal and like, I mean, look, this guy just like won like $36 million. Um, you know, I, I remember I watched some stream of some guy who had moved to Canada in order to legally stream. <laughs> This was so. This was one of the most heartbreaking things I've ever seen in my not, life. There's not. There are many such cases. Not one individual. There's but, multiple people. There's multiple. Uh, so Stake will either move uh, streamers to Canada or not move them, but like they will move on their own volition to either Canada or Mexico, where uh, there are no such uh, horrible restrictions, <laughs> supposedly in the land of the free. You know what I mean? It's fucking bullshit that America has such disgusting restrictions on, uh, you know, online gambling. Um, but yeah, no, they, they do that all the time. Like uh, uh, Aiden Ross, another popular streamer who does it, he literally would fly out to Mexico and like they put him in a fucking fat compound and he would just have like a week's worth of just, uh, you know, gambling streams and shit for like a $4 million a month deal. That's how much money they have, by the way. And those numbers that are actually much crazy. higher. Oh, yeah, they absolutely are, because you know they're getting paid a ton on the fucking back end from those companies. Yeah, like, another thing that you, you love, know. by the way, is Drake is all over it, too. Uh, Drake's entire... Come on, you Brace, gotta you gotta be... I mean, you, you gotta be on this. I'm surprised you didn't well, know about this. Drake has his entire Instagram fu functionally dedicated to stake promotions. Now, if you go to his Instagram no! right now, there's, like, I would go so far as to say... I mean, mo like... There is definitely an obviously large amount, like a comically large amount of stake crypto sponsorships on Drake's Instagram. It's kind of surprising that no one has like really paid attention to this or considered it at all. Like I, cause I rarely ever see any coverage of this. There was like one viral tweet that I saw where it was like two albums in a span of eight months. Like I know a degenerate gambler when I see one, like that was the only thing I've ever seen reference to like Drake's uh, <laughs> gambling addiction. At stake, I'm gonna bust your head up. Wait, I'm gonna bust your head, run up the racks, and bless my people. Sorry, ahead of the time. Drake versus stake. Yeah, this was a this was he did a stream. He did a live stream on Twitch where he did like a like a stake live stream basically. And I think because of the way Twitch is, it was like originally blacklisted as soon as it came up because they probably thought it was like a botted stream or something because there's a lot of fake streams. Like there's a lot of like Elon Musk crypto scam streams out there. I do so those. I think they blacklisted the stream, but it only got, it got like around 43,000 average viewers. You know what I mean? He like promoted it on his Instagram. That's insane. The only two, like the comments that I see, like, you know, how Instagram shows you a couple comments, sample, yeah. sample comments in case you want to click more. Uh, from a, something called card porn, which is, this is something that I also looked at during the gambling episode, which is, uh, you know, how people got really into like magic and cards and Pokemon Yeah. before Bored Apes really hit. Uh, they threw three fire emojis and then someone from FaZe Clan. So that's actually uh -huh. another streamer I know, FaZe Banks. Oh, um, shouts out to FaZe Banks. Brother Banks. King. Bro, shout, out to, shout out to Brother Banks. King. I'm FaZe Honestly, enough. I I had a really good time with you and him last week. Yeah. And that, that, that was, I got to tell you. Everything Brace is saying is a lie, by the way. Please don't. <laughs> I, I, I got to tell you. I have, hung out with, I have hung out with Brother Banks many, many times. I know him. I know. But I got to tell you, I don't know where you got that fentanyl from, Hassan. <laughs> but you had us. You had us. You had us zooted, man. I thought I was a board ape. Uh, I'm but, never having you on this broadcast ever <laughs> again. I, I, I brought it up, man. Let me come in the house. No, uh, I, I, it's, it's, dude. Uh, one thing, one thing, one thing. Before you kick me off of here, did you see the preview for Seth Green's ape show? Oh my god. Uh, I wait. The one that was like stolen from him, right? Stolen from. I think he got it back, but like, it, the, it was, I, I. They showed a preview of it at VCon, Gary V's um, convention. Is this um, you getting back at me because I said you're a journalist? 
<laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, this video is the most insane thing I've ever seen in my fucking life. Because it's like, Seth Green, who is Dr. Evil's kid, a classic role. I mean, that should, you're set for life after that. Was like, I'm going to make the most dumbass, boring looking sitcom in the world. Except half the characters are NFTs. Do they fuck? Because I remember, yeah. It, it, okay, this is a serious question. Do yeah. you think the NFT, like, do you think the board ape fucks like human beings or do they fuck like other NFTs? Oh, that's a good, honestly, I think, it, I think if you're existing in like an NFT extended universe where they're all like hanging out, I think that there's cross species pollination. If the species is anthropomorphic enough. Hey, Gary V makes a cameo in that trailer as well. It's so, it's one of the craziest things in my, I've ever seen in my life. It's it reads like a it's parody, awesome. and I did I I honestly I watched it to the end thinking it was like a joke, like a kind of a meta joke about NFTs, and the fact that it was real I think shook me in a way that nothing else really has. Well, you can like you can see here in one of the scenes uh, on the trailer from Gary V. Con. I'm showing this on my stream right now. There is a there is an NFT looking cat. Uh, on what it seems like is a very boring date with a human being, uh, a lovely lady who's drinking an alcoholic beverage, and the cat is on his phone. And then also, more importantly, I mean, I'm diving deeper into this, but there's also another sequence here. Who is this actress, chat? There's this, like, I think she's, like, a famous actress, like an older famous actress, um, basically picking up and carrying one of the female NFTs. From what I can gather, I think that it's like acceptable within like NFT land if like a cat NFT and an ape NFT fuck because they're both kind of like people animal NFTs. I don't know if you're allowed to like if I'm a human, I don't know if I'm allowed to hook up with like a cat that looks like a woman. Yeah. Wait, or I think boy. it's like Carmela Soprano maybe. That's that's who is in the trailer. There's a lot of famous people in this trailer. I honestly had no idea there was anybody famous in that trailer. Yeah, except I, 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 I I've like v. never seen anything. So I'm, uh, Gary V, of course. I, I mean, he is. I have like a, I have an app on on Chrome that when Gary V appears on screen for me, whether it's in a video or a still picture, it highlights him in gold. What? And replaces his eye. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, it probably does exist. Um, but yeah, there's, uh, I, I mean, I, I'm surprised that like, this is still going. I wonder if this project will ever happen now that, you know, NFTs are worth nothing, which is what they were always worth. Technically. Do you ever think like Hassan, like, do you ever like in like your dark moments think you're like, you know, if I wanted to, like, if I was like evil version of me, like I could probably do like an insane rug pull. Oh my God. Me. Yes. 100%. Yeah, I mean, I see so much of it and a it's lot of so it goes of it. completely unpunished that totally. like, it would be so easy to do. It would be the easiest fucking thing to do on the planet. Like I get why like all those like insane, like streamer people do. That's actually how I know what's like, which streamers are which now, because I watched a bunch of those coffee Zilla videos about like insane scams. I, I feel really bad for people who fall for them but i'm like this was, seems like it would be so easy to do like it if you is. have any mo modicum of internet notoriety you could do it like even the ice poseidon guy that guy's famous for being a bad guy and he was still able to do a rug pull yeah and he was like and this was way after his like prominence because at its yeah. peak he was famous for being a bad guy but like he was he was like incredibly popular back then and way after his fall from grace, he was still able to do something like that, which is crazy. So like it's any crazy. kind of, yeah, as long as you have even a little bit, even like a fraction of clout, you can, you can so easily do things like this. Yeah. Which is crazy. Fuck. So yeah. I just wanted to announce here, um, you know, on your show that I'm doing a series of NFTs with really cool original art. Um, it's the Gary B collection. Uh -huh. um for belden and we're kind of doing like it's it's versions of me except i'm wearing different glasses and sometimes a funny little hat um they will be drawn by people i met on fiverr which is cool it's a diverse group of artists mostly on the 
subcontinent, people call it, you know, yeah. various parts of it from the east to the west, baby. Um, yeah, you're uplifting and, the working the the working class of the third world. Exactly, exactly. And like, no, I'm not paying them five a, a fiver. That's just what the app is called. I'm paying them significantly less than that. Yeah, that would be um, too much. They would not know what to do with all that kind of money. Exactly. I don't yeah. want to like. I know I don't want to cause any inflation over there. So yeah. Um, there will be approximately twenty thousand um different versions of myself. Uh, I did start a Discord. I know I'm banned from Discord for and like public schools, etc. Uh, I guess private ones too. But um, <laughs> but I know I'm, for similar reasons, I get it, I get it, I get it. But I do use a cheap Discord knockoff. It's Discord with a K and two Ds. I heard you're using um, what they were using in Cuba to the, <laughs> yes, the CIA yeah. Cuban Twitter. <laughs> I, I use CIA Cuban Twitter. Uh, unfortunately, it it does have no voice chat. It does have a video that it makes you use while you type. So everyone's just typing silently uh, to each other uh, on video. And it's a really great community. Um, you know, everyone's kind of there to celebrate me. And uh, it's just like, honestly, we're going to the moon. That's it. You've activated the, the trigger word. Everyone is, everyone's going <laughs> in now. It's all, we're all in. So uh, things haven't been like minted or made or drawn yet or whatever, but we are doing a pre-minting deposit type process. I will be, uh, Hassan told me, I, I paid him uh, several thousand B coins earlier, yeah. uh, and he said he will be putting up a QR code for the last four hours of his stream uh, for the next two weeks, yeah. which has been really, I mean, I'm I, so I'm, so, I'm heavily invested. I'm so in. I love this. Dude, also, how are you wearing a long sleeve shirt right now? I'm roasting. Oh, I, I always crank the AC in my house because I hate the environment. I, I, you know what I'm working with? I'm working with a ceiling fan that's not even on. I'm what is so that wet. behind you? Is that like a grill? Oh, that's a heater to the other side. Do you not see it next to the door brace? Oh, I guess dude, that's I don't a know heater, what that. Though. I that's don't know heater. what that thing. Yeah, it's a, every house in LA has a heater, and none have air conditioning. Yeah, because it gets really. It because it does get really fucking. It can get really cold at night uh, in the winter. Yeah, well, that's because. But the heaters you, don't work either, so. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, this heater also doesn't work. Yeah, none of and that works. That's just, they they painted over it so many times. <laughs> I just get a couple of buxom bored apes to crawl into bed with me, and <laughs> keep from me the, warm with their fur. Gary B. Gary, Gary B. B. Yeah. All right. Shout well, out to the shout out to the community. Yeah. Thank you so much, Brace, for coming on and uh, promoting your your next crypto initiative. This was wonderful wonderful to have you me. um and hopefully we can have liz next time as well i don't know why she was like oh i can't make it you know she's too cool it's fine i get it i will be, in her defense she did get up at like five which i know you get up at five every day every day but not no, everyone's I you I, I uh, she got five. she got up at five to go to the courthouse so you know i got up at 11 to not do that i feel you all right well once again all thanks right, Thank you so much for coming on, Brace. Um, Thank you. I had a blast. All right. Well, you can, like I said, open invite anytime you want to pull up. Would love to. All, all right. right. Peace. See ya. All right, folks. That was Brace Belden of the Belden program. Uh, shouts out the Brace uh, of the True Anon pod. He certainly does not run the True Anon pod uh, Twitter account that was run by Mehmet. Constance Shulman was that actor. Please go shooting with him, bro. It'll be a total blast. Yeah, I mean, literally, it would be a total blast. You know, the conservatives in that universe really oppose NFT human relationships? Yeah, not Clarence Thomas, though, as we found out. <laughs>